Let me make this very clear, Mr Sassoni. You have no right to go and speak with the UK Speaker, having conversations that are directly interfering into our domestic politics. It exposes, it ex it exposes your intentions to intervene at all levels to stop Brexit. It is immoral. Shame on you. Yeah. And Mr Barnier, I note throughout your speech, sir, I note throughout your speech, you kept referring to the British negotiators as just British. We are the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and that will never change. Brexit was not a rejection of Europe or our wonderful European friends. It was a rejection of the anti-democratic nature of EU institutions, and you confirm to us every day it was right to leave. Thank you. Yeah! Thank you very much and I want to, in fact to start by uh, uh, responding to Mrs. De Lucy who is attacking here this parliament saying that we are undemocratic while they are here re uh, elected here and they are not elected in the British parliament. So who is more democratic uh, you think? Who is more democratic? In your own country neither in the UK before or Brexit has one representative in the British parliament and here where you have more than I don't know uh, to much representatives, you are saying that we are not democratic. Crazy is this. But that said, I will be less diplomatic than uh, Michel Barnier. Uh, I think that uh, the proposal that uh, Boris Johnson exactly one week ago has put forward uh, was not serious at all, dear colleagues. Not serious at all because it was, in fact, I call it a virtual proposal. It was not a real proposal. It gives, in fact, a, a veto to the DUP. Uh, in, in a number of issues. It uh, is putting custom facilities, not on the border between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic, but in all the other parts of the island of Ireland that we don't know yet. And finally, the proposal is to downgrade the political declaration uh, and the future relationship by undercutting, in fact, uh, by making a sort of Singapore at the sea, at the North Sea, uh, like they, they like there behind me, uh, these 20, but by in fact destroying the ecological, social and labour standards. And I have to tell that to Richard Corbett, because he's a labour representative, I can never understand that today there are 20 or so labour MPs thinking to vote together with uh, uh, the government of the UK for such a deal. That should be the contrary, the contrary of all the, all the things that Labour has always defended uh, uh, in the past. And, uh, okay, I hope that it is not happening. But the reason, the real reason why this is all happening is very simple. It's a blame game. A blame game against everybody. A blame game against the Union, against Ireland, against Mrs. Merkel, against the British judiciary system, against Labour, against the Lib Dem, even against Mrs. May. The only who is not be blamed is Mr. Johnson himself, apparently. But all the rest are the source of our problems. That is what is happening uh, today. And all those who are not playing his game are traitors, are a collaborator, are surrenders. Well, in my opinion... Dear colleagues, the real traitor is he or she who risks bringing disaster upon his country, its economy and its citizens by pushing Britain out of the European Union. That's, in my opinion, a traitor. Mr Verhofstadt, you have provoked two colleagues uh, who have blue card questions, only two. Um, the first that we caught was, I'm trying to read the word, Martin Edward, Dobne, will you accept the question? So the floor is yours, Mr. Dobne, for 30 seconds. Dad, I would like to ask you why you don't respect democracy. You, you claim to respect democracy. You just said um, you don't think that the Labour Party should be allowed to vote with our Conservative Party. Why not? That is their democratic right. 
And do you remember how you opposed the fact that Turkey wanted to throw a new election because you didn't agree with the first one, yet you want us to throw a second referendum in the UK? Mr Verhofstadt, you do not believe in democracy, except when it suits you and except when you win. And when you lose, as you did Thank at the you European referendum and the Brexit colleagues. referendum, you just don't oh. like it, do you? I'm afraid you've lost, my friend. Goodbye. I'll try and keep it to 30 seconds, so I'm sure, Mr Verhofstadt, you will confine your answer to 30 seconds, please. The mic appears not to be working. Democracy, you can change your mind. And I have this... I have... I, no? Yeah. And I have the... I have a... I have only a small impression, I have a small impression that in the meanwhile, the majority of the British citizens have changed their mind. Sorry, colleagues. Please listen to the answer and try not to holler. There's no need for it. Mr Corbett, I think in fairness I will ask, will you accept a question, Mr Verhofstadt? You're in demand. Like Mr. always. Corbett. Yeah. Okay, go That's ahead, democracy. Mr Corbett. 30 seconds. Curiously, Madam President, the, uh, Mr Verhofstadt asked me a question during his speech about a small number of Labour MPs who've written to President Tusk urging a deal and compromise which they might vote for, not this deal by Mr Johnson. But another way to stop Mr Johnson, of course, would be to vote no confidence in the House of Commons and put Jeremy Corbyn in number 10. But it's the Liberal Democrats who are opposed to that. They say they'll do anything to stop Brexit, but they won't even put Jeremy Corbyn in Downing Street as a temporary government. I'm sorry, Mr weeks. Corbett, it wasn't a question. I'm not sure, Mr Verhofstadt, can you make a question out of a statement? To make it into a question, but I don't think that it is in this House that we have to discuss the internal affairs of the Labour Party uh, and the British Parliament. Uh. Okay. You have succeeded in irritating both sides of the House, Mr Verhofstadt, so, so it's a balance. Although I have to say, as I said, indeed, that was my remark, incredibly balanced. So calm down to my right, please. Friends, assalamu alaikum. As we all already know, Boris Johnson is a liar, a charlatan, a racist, a national disgrace, an enemy of democracy, a selfish saboteur, a puppet to an unelected bureaucrat. And as the grandma, even in his own constituency, says, a filthy piece of toe rag. I'm very happy to listen to colourful uh, parliamentary language, but not unparliamentary language. And I think we heard a string of adjectives there uh, against the British Prime Minister, totally unwarranted, and which should be withdrawn. They're not suitable for use in this House. I am reminded, colleagues, that we do have a rule. It's called Rule 10, and we try and have mutual respect between members and respect for the dignity of Parliament, maintenance of security and order on our premises. So I do try and ask people to be respectful to one another, even where you have difference. So perhaps our next speakers would try and live by that code. Monsieur Barnier, will you please explain to this chamber and indeed the citizens of Europe why you refuse to adopt the recommendations of your own expert, Lars Carlson, in his report, Smart Borders 2, his excellent 48-page report produced in November 17, confirming that using existing technologies, existing best practices around the world, that actually you could have a friction-free border in Ireland. Why, sir, do you continue to reject that recommendation? May I put it to you? The reason is that you want to handcuff the European Union to regulatory alignment and to the customs union because you don't want us to succeed as a high-growth, low-tax, smartly regulated country off Europe. Thank you very much. Yeah. In a way, it looks like that Mr Johnson is trying to sell us a very nice house with swimming pool, the only problem is that it might not have a swimming pool, after all. Boris Johnson has lost his majority in Parliament. The European election results and every opinion poll show a majority for, for Remain. 
Once Britain has an extension, a cross-party majority in the House of Commons will eject Johnson from office. We would ask you for as long an extension as possible so that a new government will be able to hold a new referendum and the UK will find a solution. I just want to ask my colleague from the United Kingdom, talking about how she thinks that our Prime Minister can't be trusted, her party stood on a manifesto in 2017 of respecting the referendum result. Without any recourse to the general public, they have changed that to revoking Article 50 and stopping Brexit. Exit. Hypocrisy. Thank you. I think it's a statement, but perhaps there is a question there somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in response to that, I would like to say that, when, that there is no clarity, and never was, about what type of leave was on the referendum. When we have a clarity about that, whichever type of leave is, is to be put to a second referendum, the people should have a choice. And in response to the revoke Thing, that would be after a general election and therefore after a clear vote to remain. And there is a second question from Ms Fox, Claire Fox. Do you accept? Excuse me, I'm not asking you if you accept. I'm asking the lady who would answer the question. So now that the lady will accept, you do have the floor for 30 seconds. And as you know, I'm very strict on 30 seconds. Thank you. If you are so confident in your politics... Why don't you let us have a general election? Why do you, the Lib Dems, refuse and vote against ordinary voters in the country going to the polls? You've said you won't let them do it until you've taken something off the table that you decided on their behalf, anti-democratically. You are neither liberal nor democratic, and you say you're ashamed of the Parliament, I'm ashamed that you're a British MEP. And that, That's madam, my final not a question. question. But it's a it statement. was a question. Actually, is she no. ashamed? Well, allow you answer that, because I dare say you'll have a good answer. I'm very ashamed of some of the things that have been put out recently by Leave.eu. Um, on the point of um, our Parliament... Um, I think our parliament is well overdue for a general election, but to remove the UK from the... Um, to crash out uh, during the course of that election, when there seems to be a majority in the UK for Remain, would be an appalling travesty of democracy. So we must secure the extension before we have the election, and then bring it on, and we will win far more MPs, and always have done, than the Brexit party. We are not dealing with people acting in good faith. Yes, that means you, Mr Barnier. You're not looking for solutions, you're looking to put obstacles in our way. You may have conned a very weak and gullible Mrs May into signing up into a new treaty from which there was no escape, but you're not conning us. We don't want your treaty in any form, even with Mr Johnson's proposed amendments. The referendum was very clear. We voted to leave the institutions of the European Union and to be free. And, you know, we've had enough of being talked down to by you, insulted by Messrs Tusk and, indeed, Juncker. And we will never accept a German Chancellor attempting to annex a part of our nation. We simply won't have it. The good news is your wretched treaty is off the table Support for a clean break Brexit is growing and it will be the winning ticket at the next general election. I didn't think we were discussing the UK's next general election. I thought we were discussing Brexit. You have, of course, provoked some reaction from colleagues. Will you accept... Blue card question. Ms Bunting. Uh, am I on? Hi. Um, yes, the country voted, the UK voted to leave the EU. But they didn't know what they were voting on and they were misled. They were... Could you ask a question? Avowedly... I don't want a statement. I'm really sorry. I need a question. Yes. I would like Nigel Farage to account for why he stood in front of that poster with refugees that had nothing to do with Euro European Union. I would like to ask why they supported... Um, erroneous statistics and inaccurate facts. They know... Uh, your time they is have up, a... madam. It is okay. 30 seconds. Thanks. 
have two other colleagues who want to ask questions, and I'm going to allow it even though we are over. So, Mr. Farage, will you answer that, please? You patronising, snuck-up snob. How dare you? How dare you tell people okay, look, they Mr. didn't Farage. know what they were voting Mr. for? Farage, they knew please. exactly what they were voting for. They were voting against 50 years of people like you lying to them. They did it. You promised. You'd enact it. And you, the Lib Dems and others, have betrayed the greatest democratic exercise in the history of our nation. Let that settle for a moment. <laughs> just let that settle. Can I just say, I am taking a decision not to put two more questions to Mr. Farage. I think it's the correct decision, and I now move on to our next speaker.